Let's talk about one of the most influential theories when it comes to bet sizing in poker. I'm speaking, of course, about the geometric bet size. In this video, we're going to talk about the concept of pot geometry. We'll talk a little bit about clairvoyance, why this matters, we'll put theory into practice, and then we're going to say why this doesn't always happen in GTO. Without further ado, let's talk about pot geometry. So the geometric bet size is a really fascinating theoretical concept in poker. In this video, we're going to discuss what is pot geometry. We're going to talk a little bit about clairvoyance and polarization. We're going to talk about why this matters. Following that, we're going to put some theory into practice so you can learn how to actually implement this in your game. And lastly, we're going to look at non-geometric strategies. So what is pot geometry? Well, in poker, this refers to betting an equal fraction of the pot on each street such that you're all in by the river. For example, 60% pot, 60% pot, 60% pot shove. Now, why does this matter? Why is it that you would want to bet an equal fraction on each street? Well, like I said, this concept is fundamental to bet sizing theory. A geometric betting strategy maximizes your opponent's overall defending range. This, theoretically, forces them to put in the most money into the pot. Therefore, when we have a perfectly polarized range, in other words, we have the nuts or nothing, we want to use a strategy that maximizes how much money they put into the pot. The best strategy is then to bet the same pot percentage on every street such that we're all in by the river. So before we go on, let's just go over some basics. What is perfectly polarized? Well, perfectly polarized means we either have the nuts or a bluff, and villain's range is bluff catchers relative to our range. So they always beat a bluff and they always lose to our value. Now, given that we're perfectly polarized, we are clairvoyant. Now, clairvoyant is a fancy word. Outside of poker, you might think of it as psychic, having outside knowledge that you shouldn't have. But in poker or in game theory, it refers to a situation where you know whether or not you're ahead or behind. You know if you have the winning hand or the losing hand. Conversely, villain who has a bluff catcher does not know if they are ahead or behind. And that information dissymmetry is fundamental to why you'd want to use this strategy. So enough talk. Let's actually show you this concept in practice. Now, like we said, the core idea is that it will maximize how much money villain puts into the pot. Let's go take a look at the spreadsheet so we can see that in action. So here is a cool tool that I've made to help you visualize and better understand this concept. So here we can see we can enter the pot, stack, number of bets, and it's gonna calculate a geometric sizing. So for example, let's say it's a button versus big blind single race pot. The pot is five and a half, stacks are 97.5, and we wanna get it in over three streets. Well, if we bet 115.8% of the pot on flop, turn, and river, we're gonna get stacks in smoothly, such that we're all in by the river. Villain's final calling range is about 10% of their original starting range. How do I know that? Well, it's an estimation based on the minimum defense frequency on each street. So 46% times 46% times 46% equals about 10%. Now there's two interesting things you can do here. For one, you can play around with this to try and see, for example, how wide their final calling range is based on different SPRs. So imagine a button open versus small blind three bet. Let's say they three bet to 11 big blinds. So the pot will be 22 plus one, 23, and the stacks are 89. Well, now we see that they need to defend just over a quarter of their range. As the SPR decreases, their stack off range increases. So for a single raise pot, here we can see if we bet an equal fraction on three streets, they're gonna defend about 11% of their range. Whereas if we just 
open ship, they only defend about 6% of their range, according to minimum defense frequency. Whereas for a three bed pot, where the SPR is maybe closer to three, four, they have to defend significantly more of their range. And we can estimate that their final stack off range is somewhere between this blue line and this uh, green line. Is it green or yellow? I'm colorblind. Anyway, the idea is the shallower the stacks, the less money behind, the more they have to call. And that has a direct effect on your strategy, right? Because they're going to have to defend more when there's less money behind, and that dulls the value of the nut advantage. Whereas in like a 200 big blind deep pot, the nut advantage counts for so much more because by the time you get all the money in, you're only looking at like a tiny fraction of their original starting range. Anyway, back to the geometric sizing. We can take a look at this tab here. Now, what I've done is I've just entered a bunch of arbitrary betting strategies that happen to get it all in by the river. So you can go like 10%, 20%, and then, you know, 900%. Or you can use maybe something a little more reasonable, like 120, 170, 60, something like this. And what I've done is I've graphed or I've calculated how much money they tend to put in. So this here is just their final calling range based on MDF times the pot. And then on the right here, we have villain's total contribution. That is to say the times they fold the flop or call flop and then fold turn or call flop and turn and then fold river or call all three and see a showdown and then subtract the original starting pot. So this is how much money villain contributes to the pot based on our betting strategy. And what you'll find is that ridiculous, jagged strategies such as, you know, check, check, 1600% ship are going to cause them to defend as tight as possible and therefore put in the least amount of money into the pot. Conversely, smooth betting strategies such as 110, 110, 110 cause them to put in more money into the pot. And if you're a theory nerd like me, you can do some math and calculate the standard deviation. That is to say, how similar are these numbers? And the more similar these numbers are, flop bet, turn bet, and river bet, the smoother the betting strategy is. So we can say that smooth betting strategies tend to do better or tend to cause villain to put in more money than rough betting strategies. And of course, I had to graph this because graphs are fun. And so here we see the amount of money Villain puts into the pot based on how smooth it is. And as it gets smoother and smoother, the more money they put in. Lastly, I wanted a way to visualize all three bets and the total money going into the pot. So it's difficult to do this well because it's hard to visualize four dimensions on a two-dimensional screen. But here's what I came up with. So this top line here is the total amount of money they put into the pot. And these here are the sizes of the bets. So for example, you get this massive river bet and like smaller flop and turn bets. When you use these jagged rough strategies, there's less money going into the pot. But as the strategies get smoother and smoother, that is to say, you're betting a similar portion on each street to get stacks in by the river. They're going to put more money into the pot. Anyway, if you want to play around with this a little more, a uh, link to this spreadsheet is in the description, also in the presentation. And you'll just need to make a copy to play with it yourself. Next, we're going to look at some GTO Wizard solutions and reports to see how you can implement this into your game. So here's a really common example of the geometric bet size in practice. Let's say you're playing the big blind against button, single raise pot. And for this example, I've selected queen 4-4. Four, four, but to be honest, you'll see this in a lot of spots where the button checks back the flop. Let's take a look at turn reports. 
the most common sizing when we do bet on this type of texture is going to be either a block bet or an over bet. And it's 250%. What is special about 250%? Well, that just so happens to be the geometric size for this SPR over two streets. So let's pick, I don't know, an ace looks like a pretty good example. Now, you don't want to do a lot of betting on an ace. You want to be checking quite a bit. But when you do bet, you're basically representing trips or a bluff. Maybe a little bit of top pair. But for the most part, trips or a bluff. We can see how this is constructed. And we'll note that once we bet 250%, button doesn't have a raising range. They don't need to when we bet this large. Let's just pick some brick river. And again, it's the same fraction of the pot on the river. So we get to go 250, 250 to get it all in. This is a nice smooth betting strategy that's going to maximize the efficiency of how much money goes into the pot. Conversely, if you use something like, I don't know, a 75% here, well, now it's almost impossible to construct a realistic shoving range because it's like 700% pot. And if you do go for this, villain's overall calling range is going to be so much tighter that it's just not realistically a great strategy. So turn probes are by far one of the most common spots where you'll see geometric sizes in practice. Um, particularly, I think a lot of people over probe on the turn with small sizes or medium sizes, but realistically, if they're checking back a reasonable range, you want to use uh, a lot of turn over bets, and in particular, stuff that's closer to the geometric size, which is about 250% in this case. Here's another example. So this is a cutoff versus big blind single raise pot. The flop is a seven deuce. We start with a one third bet. And I know what you're thinking, Tom, why aren't they using the geometric size here? I'll talk more about this later, but essentially, you can't construct the perfectly polarized range on the flop. Your range is not perfectly polarized. In fact, it's quite merged. There's plenty of medium hands in there. So, in practice, instead of starting with this extremely nuts or bluff strategy, it starts with a smaller size, which has the effect of clarifying your opponent's range. After making this bet, it's going to be easier to construct a more polarized range on turn and river. Big blind calls, and let's give this king of spades. Now the reason I've chosen a king of spades is because this card is gives you the least incentive to want to bet small, and that's because your king x has literally nothing to gain by making another bet here. Realistically, it just folds out worse and gets called by better, and there's already an ace on board so you're not worried about being outdrawn by overcards. So when your middling hands have no incentive to bet, that just leaves your strong hands. And in that case, you usually want to construct something that consists of extremely strong hands and bluffs, which is perfect for the geometric bet size. So here we see, for example, we use a range of two pair, very strong top pair, and gut shots, and some other very weak draws, or just complete air as bluffs. So the geometric bet size here is something like 195, which is something in between these two sizes, maybe closer to 175. And so the idea is that we can construct this very strong polarized betting strategy. Again, 
big blind does not need to raise very much at all facing these big overbets. That's because we're putting in so much money into the pot that it's not required to check raise. And I've just given some brick river here. We can construct the shoving strategy. So now that we've seen some examples, let's look at some big data. Here I've got a flop report that contains strategic information from every possible flop. For this example, I'm using the complex solutions. These solutions are useful because they have a ton of bet sizes and I can graph those bet sizes and zoom in to get a bigger picture. So when I first, uh, when I was first exploring this, I was quite surprised to see this bimodal distribution. That is to say, in this spot, which is button versus big blind single race pot, we see plenty of small sizes, not a lot of medium sizes, and then over bets. Why is that? Well, it's largely because you either start with these small medium block bet sizes, which help clarify the ranges. These are used with less polarized strategies, more merged. In these cases, you typically polarize on turn or river. Or, on some occasions, you can construct polarized strategies right from the flop, and these are going to be closer to geometric. Remember, the geometric size here is about 116, so somewhere between these two. Uh, however, we see even larger sizes than geometric. And you might ask yourself, why is that? You know, you can't get more polarized than perfectly polarized. And the answer to that question comes down to draw equity. So instead of trying to maximize villain's defending range, it may actually be worth it to... It may be more profitable if they overfold on earlier streets when that fold equity is more valuable, right? You can blast them off some draws. And that's why we see some really big overbets in here. And in fact, we can switch over to table mode. And I'm just going to sort by... Oh, you know what? I'm actually going to group the actions together. Sort by overbet. So ace, queen, eight, for example, should be a good one. And I'll ungroup these now. Maybe I'll even graph them. Yeah, I like the graph here. So Ace Queen 8 is a fun one because we can construct an extremely strong range with very strong top pair hands. Two pair uh, sets. However, there's also a ton of draw equity, right? There's flushes. There are straight draws. There are gut shots. And so what the silver prefers instead of a geometric size is something slightly larger, like a 150% size bets or even a 200. And these are fun because they have the effect of blasting the big blind off a number of their draws. Maybe I just expand these for a second. You can see they're even folding some flush draws off the bat, um, folding most of their gut shots. Folding, like, for example, most of their second and third pair, and even some top pair, which all have outs against us. So, in practice, you're never really perfectly polarized, or you're rarely perfectly polarized, but you can still create very strong hands and very weak hands and construct a betting range like that. And... Instead of using a geometric size, we see it sometimes go even larger than geometric for the purposes of denying equity early on. Let's take a look at another example. So, for example, we can say uh, cutoff opens button three bets, cutoff calls. So the geometric bet size here is about 65%. And if we take a look at what bet sizes are preferred, 
we note that everything's kind of spread out here, but it drops off drastically after the geometric bet size. Um, and this is a function of the lower SPR, right? Like you're never going to see these 150% over bets on in like a three bet pot because they're overkill for the SPR. So we can use the geometric bet size to gauge what is an appropriate bet size for this SPR. And in this case, it's, you know, about two thirds pot is close to the maximum. Again, we do see some larger sizes to deny some of that draw equity. But for the most part, it's going to be about two thirds pot as a maximum. So let's let's go ahead and sort by that. Find some examples. Ace Queen 10 is a good one. Yeah, so Ace Queen 10 is another similar situation where you have enough of a nut advantage that you can construct very polarized ranges. Um, it does go a little bit bigger because there are, again, a lot of draws here. But if you go about 61 on each street, then that's going to maximize how wide cutoff calls in the end. Here we can see the geometric size would be maybe 70% here, and it's basically splitting between these two. So, again, you could kind of explore these graphs, these flop reports, and you'll notice that the geometric bet size is present in all of them. So now that we've discussed the geometric sizing at length, let's talk about the elephant in the room, non-geometric strategies. Why is it that hijack doesn't just bet 125% here? Why don't they just try and make a perfectly polarized range? I mean, if we look at the ranges tab and check out the equity distribution, we can see they have a massive range advantage throughout. Hijack has all the strongest overcards. They've got the overpairs. They've got the strong Jack X. But they don't have one important factor. That all important nut advantage. You see, Big Blind actually has the nuts. They have all the trips here. And so if Hijack were to use this super polarized geometric betting strategy right from the flop, that end up narrowing themselves against this extremely strong range where they're way behind. Instead, a much more effective strategy is going to be using a smaller size from the start and polarizing on later streets. So, for example, a 33% bet on this board forces an interesting response. We can see that because the board is so dry, Big Blind has to overfold a ton. They're folding 50%, whereas MDF says they should fold something like 25 and in order to prevent hijack from betting with impunity, from just betting any two cards, Big Blind needs to discourage them with aggressive check raising. We can see them check raising 20% of their range here. This has the effect of giving us information, right? When they check raise, that's where they're going to put most of their trips, some top pair, and some bluffs. And when they call, their range is much more condensed towards medium hands, right? Pairs, made hands, ace high, stuff like that. So we become more clairvoyant when they call, and that only happened because we force them to split their range by starting with a small bet, which forces this uh, check-raise response. For that reason, it's not always effective to start with geometric strategies. Sometimes it, what the solver will prefer is to start with smaller bets on earlier streets and only polarize on like turn and river. Or sometimes it'll wait until the river before it starts polarizing at all. Something else to consider, and someone's definitely going to point this out if I don't, is that the term value and bluff is not well defined on the flop. If we take a look at the equity, for example, top pair, top kicker, only has about 75% here. Um, 
even trips, only about 90%. So the value isn't pure value, and the bluffs aren't pure bluffs. You're not perfectly polarized. However, in general, as you approach showdown, your value will become closer to pure value, and your bluffs will become closer to zero. That is to say, the equity tends to crystallize on later streets. That's why, in general, uh, on the flop, you're going to see smaller sizes, more merge strategies at first, because your ranges are naturally less polarized, and your ranges will naturally become more polarized on later streets. Therefore, geometric strategies, and in general, just overbets, you know, nuts or nothing betting strategies, are more common on turn and river than they are on the flop. All right, let's wrap this up. So, in conclusion, the geometric bet size is the idea that you bet the same percentage, the same fraction of the pot on every street in order to get stacks in by the river. This has the effect of maximizing villains' defending range, which maximizes how much money they put into the pot. This strategy works best when your range is polarized. That's because your nutted hands want to extract the most value possible, which happens when they defend as wide as possible. I also noted that you can use the geometric bet size to approximate stack off ranges. And I've covered this in some of my previous mechanics videos, but essentially if you compare their defending range versus just shipping it on one street versus betting an equal fraction on all three streets, multiply the MDFs out, and you can roughly approximate how wide they'll defend in total, which can be used to gauge the optimal strategy and gauge the relative value of the nut advantage. Non-geometric strategies are used because your betting range is not always perfectly polarized. These strategies are best for pushing your middling equity and gaining information. Equity tends to crystallize as you approach the river. That is to say, your value becomes closer to pure value and your bluffs become closer to zero as you get further and further towards showdown. We also saw that betting larger than Geo is sometimes used to fold out draw equity. This is typically the case when immediate folds are more valuable than maximizing their calling range. However, it is fairly rare in practice. Anyway, that's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. And if you want to see more of this type of content, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. If you have any questions about this or about GTO Wizard, please join our Discord. That's the best place to post comments and ask questions. Link in the description. As always, I thank you guys all for watching. Happy grinding.